Well, Helena Keenan. Helena Keenan with the pig's face. You're turned upside down, I told you. You have a face like a pig's arse, and you have a body like an elephant. You're the most ugliest shape of a woman that I've ever seen in my life. Now, Helena, like a good half a man for yourself, stop texting underneath my photographs and stop commenting under my stuff. Okay? Does the truth really hurt you, Helena? Does the truth really hurt you? I told the truth about you. I swear in that our la I swear in that our blessed lady. And I swear in my six children. And it's true as I am in this hospital recovering from cancer. Getting better. And you heard that from the doctor's mouth. Well it's true as I am in the hospital recovering from cancer. And I swear to my six children, and I swear to our, our, our lady from Lords, and the true St. Father P.O. is hanging out, out, out my wrist. You jumped out the window after a married man. Either a married man or a single man. You jumped out a window after a man anyway, in your mother's house. And your mother bet the back of you. You had your mother's heart broke. So you did, Helena. You broke your mother's heart. That's exactly what you did. Your gowl is filthy. Filthy dirty. You smelly fat tramp, yeah. you. You that's weirding, you that's weirding nine inch of thick of makeup on your face to try to bring out a bit of good look in, your, in yourself. It's all the same how, how much makeup you put on yourself, Helena. You'll never be good looking. And don't be so jealous of my lovely woman. My woman my my woman is far from dirty. Far from dirty. I'm with my woman now. Me and my woman is together now twenty three years. And I know if my woman was dirty or if she wasn't dirty. But as true as our lady is there as true as our lady is there, you were constantly jumping out the window, the top window of your house, in your mother's house, after married men and single men. You dirty looking prostitute, yeah. That's what you are now, Helena. A dirty rotten rider. With a bad virus, you get out of your goal. That's what you, that's what you get out of you. And Paddy with the hoop snows. When he's ever got in the right place, our bit Christy Michaels knows. Know the fellow with Christy Michaels knows, witch's knows, skinny knows, long hoop he knows. You know the beating, the cutting up he's getting is gonna be unreal. Why don't you do now, Helena, what what Pauline did? Pauline went down to the south last week and fighting your sister in law. Why don't you come up to the north and fight my wife? Why don't you do that? And bring Paddy with you, and Paddy will get all the fight he wants off my son. Why don't you do that, Helena? I started commenting underneath my stuff. You dirty, fat, ugly, overgrown, hairy face pig, yeah. With your old hairy face in you. I have a pack of ragers there in the toilet, uh, in my bag. I must post them down to you. These are good readers. I have a good electric one there as well. It's um, but it's it's a home. It's one for it's one for shaving horses. It'll do the trick for you though. It'll shave the beard off the face. You dirty hairy bastard, yeah. That's why you have to wear that so much makeup in your face to hide all the hairs in your face. You smelly tramp. Now listen here for a minute, dirty arse. Keep my woman's name out of your mouth and stop commenting under my, underneath my stuff. I'm not going to I'm not going to block you. So I'm not. You're not my friend on Facebook, but I can still block you. I'm not going to block you. I'm going to let you call your names. And um, every time you call names, I'm going to tell the truth about you. Anything I ever said in the video yet, I never made up one false allegation. I always told the truth. Let it be about the Canaan's or let it be about, about, about my cousins in Blackberry Lane. I, I never told a lie about any of that. 
I always tell the truth. You, Helena, you're nothing but a dirty, smelly tramp that was running after married men and running after the single men before he met Paddy. And you're probably still at up to this day. You smelly, ugly objection, yeah. I have a horse razor at home for you that'll suit you to the ground that'll take off that big beard off your face. Right? So there you go now, Alina. So good luck, you hairy bastard, yeah. You just wear nine inch makeup on, on, on make thick, nine inch thick makeup on your ugly, hairy face to hide the hairs in your face. You smelly tramp, yeah. You big, fat, ugly, overgrowth objection, yeah. I swear in our blessed lady for the last time I shows her lady is in my hand and I swear to my little grandson and I swear to my dead father in heaven and I swear to my baby son Johnny you were jumping out the windows after the married men and the single men before you met with Paddy. So Paddy is not a fool. So Paddy had know that. Paddy would know if he, if he broke you in or, or, or not. He's not that stupid. But then again, Paddy is dirt as well because his mother was nothing under your dirty, rotten, riding prostitute of a whore. Hard to put in for, 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 for money when she knew her husband was dying. The dirty, sick bitch. So she would go on holidays and ride all around her. She got the right daughter in law. You can you go the two of you can go together now on a nice holiday and you know where you can go to? Go to Africa. You get a cook as big as your arm. So you will. It'll suit you just grand. You dirty prostitutes with a lump of AIDS hanging over it. You dirty whores. You go over there now. It'll suit you more than your line. Do you hear that? Shave the faces. Now, Helena, keep my woman's name or your mouth in future to come. And if you have a problem with me woman, and if you're that angry with me woman, you know where we are. Just tell her you're coming up, get an old ref there, and she'll go out and she'll fight you out in the field. She'll fight you like a man, or she'll fight you like a woman. It makes no difference to my woman. She, she'll fight you, and she'll bait you. Now, hairy face, I get that horse trimmers when I go home and I send it over to you. You Keenan's whore, you. You dirty Levens bitch. You Levens whore. You're not but Levens. You're the leftovers of every man in Ennis. Every man rich in Ennis. Between married men and the single men in Ennis, rich you to death. You're nothing but leftovers. You smelly, hairy face, whore you. You dirty fanny goat you. You hairy mountain goat bastard you. And, and, and the ones that's taken up for you, the ones that's sitting beside your, your husband in the van, the one that's sitting beside your husband in the van taking pictures of him and smiling, and his knees getting caught names, mountain goat, mountain goat, the fellow was sitting beside Paddy when, when, when his niece was getting called names. That's not over with. That's not over with. And I'm telling you now, Helena, that's all the truth what I told about you. And I swear to that blessed lady, that's the whole truth. You're nothing but a dirty prostitute jumping out the windows after married men and single men. And you have... Half of Venice, if not all of Venice, rid to death, you smelly virus whore you. Good luck.
me art. So, you made a video to me last night, Joe, when you were out your head with drugs and drink. You were all day in Annie's Davies taking your cocaine and your drink and your drugs, Joe. Right. And backbiting, Joe. That's why you brought my name into it, you must. Because you must be having a queer backbite. And you know you can do not to me, Joe. That's why you're bringing my name into your videos. Because you know you can do fuck all to me, Joe. Now, you're on about, Joe, that, uh, do I know any fight men that make you dance? Joe, fair enough to you, Joe. You're a good man to fight. I, and the whole world knows that. You could be the best in the world. You are a good man to fight. But I'm not your match, Joe. Your brother-in-law, the fella that you're sticking up for, your brother-in-law, Martin, is my match. And I'll box him today, tomorrow, any time he wants to box, I'll box him. And Joe, you know where I am, Joe, if you really have that much of a problem, Uncle Joe. Not you, yeah, druggy, you yeah, cocaine head, you yeah, yeah, bastard, yeah. you know where I am if you ever want to meet up and have a bit of trouble. Yeah, dirty bastard, yeah. You just taken up for the fellas that stabbed their father. Well, here it goes now. I will box Martin any day of the fucking week. Get back to me, you crooked eye. Right, so the way I see you boxing on the bag, you must be 25 stone. I've sent Christy out to you. And Christy will give you a good open for 10 minutes. Now, Joe, it's like this now, Joe. You, you think you can take a load of coke and drugs every time you feel like it and and, 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 and mention my son or mention my, or my name or my son's name. I'm telling you now, Joe, for last time you know where my house is stop making a laugh for yourself joe taking your drugs and then making old tapes joe because joe we're only small little men joe more than your line now and go and find your match and get your dirty brother-in-laws from innis for me you know the mountain clear hairy goats from innis like yourself get them for me and my son and we'll fight them do you understand that no matter with the dribbling eye out to me. And you know, you know the rest of your brother in laws Martin, Martin is my match, Joe. When you're sticking up for them, bring them out to me. And if a brother Davy there in the box as well, he boxed Teddy Teddy as well. Oh, yeah. If it's boxing you on. And Joe, another thing, boy, with your big mouth and hairy goats backing you. You ugly, you, you ugly of a Jackson, I be, Joe. You, Joe, that threatened to call my. You that threatened to beat my three children down the wall last week. But they beat my two girls and the big Johnny and caught my two sons two monkeys but about my son Davy and my son Joe well, I see look who's I'm... calling a monkey you dirty silverback hairy monkey of a goat ya going in your dirty ugly objection ya now Joe keep my name out of your mouth when you have drugs and drink down ya I made no videos to you you make nothing back to me now Joe I never threatened to be any of your children Joe only reared them Joe I reared your son John Joe for a whole year in my house. You know that, Joe. Now, and that's the thanks that you give me and Lizzie Lynn, Joe. Your dirty mountain goat. One thing I want to make clear here, Joe, you're on about bosses. You know Joe Link Diamond in the North. You know me a long time now, Joe. There was never a boss over me or my father or my brothers. Now, Joe, when you're sticking up for your brother-in-laws the whole time, when it's them that has you up to the videos, Joe, I want to box you, Martin. Get back to me with a date and time. I'd rather box you in the morning or as soon as possible. Now, Joe, like a good man, keep my children's names out of your mouth. You're worse than Uncle Bernie, you yeah. are. You're down in the well cursing as well. But I'll go to Mass, Joe, and I'll light a candle for you. Right? And up the north, Joyce. Because you're down worse than Uncle yeah, Bernie. Don't mind him now. We're, I swear and Johnny, we're making nothing back to you, Joe. I say it how much to you when you bring a my name in for, for no need. When you have drugs and drink down you. You know where I fucking live, you do. Yeah. You know where I live. Well, what's the story, everybody? This is me, Gravity Joyce, here speaking. I can't speak too loud because the wife is upstairs, listening to everything, and she's giving up about me making videos. But um, I'm personally going to make this video, and I'm going to make it short and sweet. Yes, James Quinn, you said the books that you made and the tapes that you made was history. It'll never be history, son. Your brother went along and murdered my auntie's husband. Right? That was Paddy Quinn. Right? He murdered my auntie's husband. My auntie's husband is walking towards his van with his back turned to Paddy when a woman handed him a knife and stuck it in the middle of Brian Joyce's back. Right? 
That's not in the hair there anyway. That's one thing you did. Then your other brother Michael went down along and killed his wife and murdered her in front of his own two children. Right? That's another thing. You James that's having sleepovers with other women while your own woman is having sleepovers with other men. That's another thing. Right? So there's no liquors here in Gramsci Jace's house for the Queen McDonald's. When my son was going to fight in Flatfoot, Edward Ward, old Tom Scrapper's son, Tom Scrapper was supposed to bring out two or three of his sons along with himself and along with John Paul Quinn McDonough, down in Mullingar, along with two or three of his. But when my son went out to fight Flatfoot Ward, there was about 20 Quinn McDonough's there and also Curly Paddy. The devil himself, right? So there you go. That wasn't fair play alone. How could you call it a fair play? You don't bring twenty men out against three men to show them fair play. Three men goes out in the back of a car along with three men, not three or four carloads out top of one carload. So therefore, we'll forget about the subject now. Willie Wack, after June, to help the God and the Blessed Mother, everything will go well for me. After June, I'll give you a date and time to fight me. I mean, you has got to fight, I mean, you has got to get over it. And the best man in England and Ireland to show fair play is Davy Smurf McDonough and Jimmy Chin Ward. I'm happy with them two men. I don't know Jimmy Chin, I know Davy Smurf McDonough. Maybe I do know Jimmy Chen if I see them. I have nothing bad to say about that man. But Willie Wack, me and you, has, to, has unfinished business. I'm having a few drinks tonight. Don't think it's drink talk. Willie Wack is not drink talk. When I was lying in my, in my dying bed, I was making tapes to you. I still wanted to fight you. I'm fighting you up or down. Either the way, me and you has got to fight. And I'm going to let everybody know who's the best and who's not the best. You're a nobody. You don't come from fighting breed. You don't come from a fighting man. So therefore, I am the best. I was never bet. I'm not afraid to go to a big man. I'm not afraid to go to a small man. I'm only five foot six, seventeen stone, and I can rock it when I want to rock it. And when the day comes, we'll see who rock what and what won't rock what. And with all this liquor and going on with the Queen McDonald's and this, that, one and the other, that's nothing got to do with me. I have nothing against the Queen McDonald's. That's up to Nanny's Davy to open his mouth. And if he doesn't feel like opening up his mouth about the Queen McDonald's, that's good and well for me. I couldn't give two sides. Because I chat to Queen McDonald's and I drink at Queen McDonald's. When everybody else is doing it, why can't I do it? But then, when I, but then again, when I would do a thing like that, I'd be called this, that, and the other. But yet, when other people does it, you're great people. Look at Queen McDonald's, Curly Paddy's crowd, it'll never be over with. It's simple as that, that you may have bad luck for the rest of the days of your life for killing, murdering my auntie's husband. I left my auntie a, a sick widow with a sick meningitis child and four or five small, little, small children that didn't know if they were coming or going with no father. That's what you did, Paddy. You'll have no luck for that. And we've had any problems with that, Paddy. Let me know. I said for you five or six years ago and you wouldn't fight. Paddy, Paddy Gwen, you're up with a scumbag. It's not up to me to say this, but when no one else has the ball to say it, I'll say it. Good night. Adios, Smegos. Will you act ward, scum ward, you get ready for me. I'll give you a time and date after June. Good luck. 
Oh, the story there, Willie boy. I see that old comment you put up there, Willie. You're back. Like an old bitch. You're acting like an old bitch on your Facebook there with a little comment. You won't even make a video and get back to you with the right day. You meditate. I accepted that date. That was the 15th of September. You little rough time in York, yeah. Now, that fight was set for the 15th of September, right? Now, Willie Rack, if you want to fight me, Willie Rack, there's, you're gonna to have to go out now with the rest and fight a couple of fellas and get a couple of wins. Even get a good old draw, Willie Back. I have an old brother in law down there at all, Willie Back. The boy is not for fight, so he is. He's not for fight. So out there to John Joe, my brother in law. And he give you all the fights you want. The same day Christie's gonna fight in Burley County. John Joe, I take you out as well. And fight you that day as well. If you're that mad looking for fight, I am the small thing. And there's not a plea to you that I take it off me. And you're trying for the last 20 years. And you still can't fucking do it. I am number one. And the best small toe to toe man. A five foot six. A small little man. And there's not a man of a plea to you that, that's taken up for you. That'll be able for me. I am your bosses. Your cousin got up and said it before as well, I'm your boss. I am your fucking boss. Now, I'm not even fighting you now, Willie Back. Over acting like a little bitch, which are the common. You understand that? You should have acted like a man and come back to me and made a video. Willie Back, I'm wet my hands out of you. If you're not desperate for fight, there's a fight there for you. The same day Christy is fighting. That's my brother in law, John Joe. But I'm telling you now, Willie Back, if you had to come out to me, I was knocking you clean out. So now, Willie Back, I'm going to enjoy me chicken today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat that. That chicken is better than you, son. Now go, fuck off, leave the small thing alone. You're not getting a shot of the small thing. I have your titles. I am the man. I am the best small man out there. Five foot six. Get out of all that baiting big men and baiting small men. I am the man. Now, put that in your pipe and smoke it. And don't get back to me no more. There's a fight there for you. I'm going to fight you now. Right, this is for my brother-in-law, Davy, And my brother-in-law, Joe. And John's Joe. And Birdie's Alan. I wish the four boys, the four choices, the best of luck, and with the help of all that have been home to victories tomorrow. And we'll all know tomorrow who the best man is and who the best man isn't. Who the Joyce is. Up fucking Joyce. And this is Bobby Joe, this is a song for you, Joe. I have been Well, hello, this is me, Gramsy. I'm here in the church inside in the hospital in Derry. I come up here, I, I come up here for to light a little candle for uh, Big Bang, Pat Ward, one of my old friends that we had many a pint together. I come up for the light no candle for him. And basically there's no, there's no candles in the church. But I ask God and a blessed mother and the secret heart of Jesus may I give Big Bang one of the best beds in heaven and that he may get justice, that the man or woman that did it to him may get lifed off for life. I'm here in the church in the hospital in Derry, um, but I will make my way in the Derry city tomorrow or the day after to light a little candle for Big Bang because um, he was a very good friend of mine and we had many a pint together. And I asked God and a blessed mother for to comfort his family, for to, for, for the Bernese and him, and bring comfort and him, and that they may get justice and get what they want. God give you a bed in heaven, Big Bang. You'll be sadly missed and sadly lost. You're a very nice, very, very nice fella. That's one thing I can say about you. 
you're a gentleman. God will give you a bed in heaven, and you are you are you are in heaven. Well, what's the story? I'm on the way home now I am. Basically all your prayers are working, thank God. You're very good people out there. I have more friends than I thought I did have. To be honest with you, I have a lot of friends out there, thank God. And a lot of people that was prayed for me. And I want to thank you all. I'm on the way home now here at Bowman and um, I'm heading home to my children, thank God. I have to head back up Monday. And um, the doctor told me that um, I have cancer. So I have in the throat, but uh, basically reckon they said that they can get rid of it. It's not hope alone for me. So if they say they can get rid of it, that's a good thing. So it's up to me now for me to keep myself strong and not to be worried about it. I don't even think about what to have. It's carry on normal that I don't have it. So um, thanks everyone for praying and uh, the whole lot and keep your prayers up for me because um, it's only at the early stages yet but please God everything will work work out not for my sake for my children's sake I won't say so thanks very much everyone and I want to thank I want to thank old Lena for coming up to me yesterday from the trim of all visitors I expect everyone up but I want to expect the old woman up and I want to thank that old woman for coming up as well Old oh, Martin Jones Lena, isn't it Martin Jones Lena? From Trim. Very nice woman. Very grateful and thankful for you to come up, Lena. I'm very good of you. And uh, I would thank all the people out there to say prayers for me for good and being thankful for me for good. Mary Jesus, I went to Mount Lena, Mary And uh, oh, Mike Sands Mary. Mike Sands Mary's. And Mike, Mike Sands Mary's a young fella that went up the mountain, the holy mountain for me. In Medjugorje. And let me photograph up there. I want to thank him as well. So there is a God in heaven, and God is good. And you also, you also have to keep a strong mind. And thank God, that's one thing I have is a strong mind. So I have to keep the faith up. So thanks everyone again. I'm heading home now to the children. The children now will be delighted to help God. But I'm coming back up here again Monday, and I'll know more Monday. And please God, every time I come up, I'll keep getting better news. So, adios, amigos. Right, Joe's Ellie, this is going out to you, Joe's Ellie. You're going on there, Ellie, and you're talking about my grandbaby. You're going to headstones and you're cursing, right? We don't believe in cursing. We don't believe in Ouija boards. Or we don't believe we're going to people like that because that's a pretty bad look on you. And it's you willing to see the ghosts and it's you to see the shadows. And it's you willing that says when young Joe gets out, you're going to get young Joe to deal with us. We have no problem with young Joe. We never did. I would stand behind young Joe, stand with him, die for him, and take a blow and give a blow for young Joe. But at the same time, Alan. I am one million percent behind my son and the day you think that you bring Joe up to bully my son or my daughter-in-law that's having a child, a child for my son, my grandbaby, you're going to be mistaken. It'll be the last sorriest move you'll ever make. Don't do it, Joe. I swear to my father's grave, we don't want to fall out with you, Joe. We love you to bits, Joe. But at the same time, Joe, if you come looking for it, you're going to get it. Now, oh, well, and this is me, Christy. Keep my unborn child's name out of your mouth. Are you listening? Because I have enough to say about you. When Joe got to jail, you ran up to the north, up to my house, then, and staying in my house. For starters, you shouldn't be coming up to the boy's house, then, unless you want to feed him or something, then, and do you? If it's scandal, you want to come out with it and suck the cock, is it, Ellen? Sheesh. You should have gone to your mother's and innocent, Ellen. Now, you're on to keep on about my unborn child, Ellen, yeah? 
that I put my curses down the top of you and all belong at Yell, and I don't do things like that. You the cat rear your, your little daughter Alice, me father and mother that rear John. Keep it up, Ellen, and look, I will not fall out with me Uncle Joe, but if Joe comes to the north, Ellen, I swear, and me dead grandfather, you come with him and me see what you fucking do. Here, you're I, dirty I tramp, you, and you're on about doles, Ellen. You go and do what you want, because you're getting your stop Monday. And another thing, I swear, me dead grandfather, you would have got my father caught with the guns, got me Uncle Davy caught with the guns. Keep it up, Ellen, your shit will not be took. I ain't not 13 or 14 or more. You come to the fucking north and bring who you want. You dirty country with your demons, devils taking you. Keep it up. No, Ellen, I did rear, I did rear your son John. God bless your son John. I did rear him. Me and my sister Anne Marie and my wife Elizabeth reared him. And we don't wish no badness on no child. So, Ellen, I don't know why you're getting Anne trying to curse me old grandbaby for, but I didn't even see yet, and I can't wait to see him. Now, Ellen, you're going around trying to get scandal. I swear my grandfather's grave, my woman is a decent moment. Not what I can say about you and a lot of people belong to you, and, and you know who I'm on about. Not a lot of people belong to you and you're self occluded. Do you understand that now, frickly face? Keep it up, Ellen, and you'll be a sorry woman. I swear, my grandfather, no, you'll no be gotten trouble. in this with your mock birthday shirt. I'll get you caught down there. We want no trouble off Joe, but at the one time, believe me, we won't take it. Well, now, good luck, and, and you dirty, you dirty tramp, you. Now, more than your lying, go and get your daughter off my 60 year old granny and rear your own daughter and your family. You dirty child abuser that's beating John and Tady into the face seven days a week. And coming up to my house and Joe got jail. It's cooked you come up first. Spunky mouth. Spare me mouth. Don't call him that. Yeah, dirty tramp. You don't keep it up, Ellen. Right, this can out to you, Sonny. Right here. Yeah. 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 You old jackass writer, you. Yeah. Right? You're going on there now, Sonny, and you're making old videos. You're saying that you have my young fella here on a tape saying that he won't fight your young fella. Now listen for a minute. You were the very first man the very first day to sit in your little war wagon in the little trailer on your little couch. You sat on your little couch with your little two warm belly sons beside you, right? And he ain't sent for us to fight you, right? The very first day you were told that he wasn't fighting for the reason why he's only 15 years of age. You went along and I went along and we accepted one of those challenges. I said I'd fight you, Sonny. And you said, your son Sonny said, the big old lanky oak you have, said that he'd fight my son. But your old lanky old son, a big old, up old boy he's supposed to be, and he's the same age as Christy, he won't even fight Christy. Because you know why? He hasn't got the balls to fight my sons. Now listen for a minute. This is my army. Only small, really small little men. But don't forget, we have more guts and more courage than any big man out there that has, that thinks to have balls. Big men out there that thinks to have balls, what you are, you're nothing but a cowardly pack of bastards. I'm the real Joyce, come from the real man Davy Joyce, and they're Davy Joyce's grandsons. We are the real men. So now you're getting your fight in six weeks. And send your son out. He has to fight. Like it or not now, your son has to fight, let it be in four weeks or let it be in six weeks. Get your son to grow a pair of balls and send them out here to him. Me and you, sonny, and your young, your mortal yard son and my big son. Let me talk here now. Sonny, your son sent for me. On my grandfather's grave, I know fight man, but I take clubs out your son and I beat your son in five minutes. He wouldn't laugh at me. I tear him apart. Yeah. Your son has to come out and fight me the 16th of March and die and fight the 16th. Get out the bus! Yeah, we are the men! Look at him! And Sonny, you want me to fight your son? As you all know I'm only 15. Yes, but he do! Another two years! Before that, I just fight that in another two years. Where do I get that? Red Ranger! We're not afraid of him! 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 He's 15! And this fella here, he's a big old boy as well! He's 12! He's only 12, but I'm for 13. He's not even 13 yet. He's not even 16 yet. I'm a man. He's a fucking man. Mom! Send your son out. He's dead. Make that. Oh, stuck the cup. Maggie's burning. Rape the boy. Oh, rape the boy. Maggie's burning. Sonny, you're right, he asked you. You're right, you rape the ass. And Maggie's Joe, do you want revenge from me father? Will you come out, Maggie's Joe? Joe, you want Maggie's Joe? Joe, I want that. But will you give me a dirty Maggie's fight? Maggie's Joe, you can't forget them handsome. 
Do you remember his bag? He's Joe and there's only 21. It's a box on. You remember when you were coming into me, I was hitting you all angles. And I was driving, I was lifting your body and you off the ground with boxes. I was madly lifting you off the ground. I broke your teeth and all, Maggie's jaw. I remember your jaw, your teeth was never right since, son. Your teeth is green. And I'm green, Joe. You, you're just useless, man. Sonny, come out to me in six weeks and send your son out as well. How more didn't have a son or a grandson that beat me? Get out to me. How more never had a son that could beat me? Now, so, now, Sonny, get your son to grow up here, boys. Send him out to my big lad here. We're the toughest name of a choice, we are. Davy Joyce sons. We're the toughest choice that's gone. We don't give a fuck for dirty rows. We don't give a fuck for anything. We fight. As simple as that. Now, one thing I want to say here. We're Ramsey Joyce's son and me personally. Me personally. I'm not afraid of living or dying and get any man to start me. And what you see here is what you get. This is my crowd here. These are my three sons. I have another son there in the little weeks, man. It will be Johnny, we call him. We're on our own. Us Jesus, I was always on my own. But now, thank God, I have I have four big sons now. So we're we're united together. We're different than Jesus completely than any other Jesus. We want no Jesus taking up for us. We want no one taking up for us. We want no one around us. We're not taking up for no one anymore. So good luck now, Sonny. And get your son to grow up here of balls. Sonny, your son has to fight me. There's two fights on the 16th of March. Me and my, you and my father, me and your son. If not, boys, you'd be sorry, man. I, I see, Sonny, you making videos showing your trailer. I kill you with who's in it. And that's a fact. Sonny, Sonny, we're only across the border, son. We're only about 10 minutes from the cabin. That's all. Ten minutes from cabin, Sonny. You swear that we were hiding in, it, in, in Africa or in Australia. We're only up the road. I came up here to get away from you dirt. I came up here for peace. And it won't take me an hour to get down with top of Wally for five minutes and take a back road back home. Sweet home. Well, everybody, what's the crack? What are you all up to? Any old news out there? Well, basically, my wife, my wife uh, Elizabeth, left the north earlier on to go down to Athlone to a wedding belonged to her sister Sabrina. Right? Her sister Sabrina and Nanny's Davy and the family had all the best of welcome for Elizabeth and for Christy and that that was at the wedding. But our Big Joe, Big Joe, as we call him Big Joe, he came over to his daughter and grabbed her by the head of hair and got out of her and tried to bait her over calling the Keenan woman names up in Innes. But yet Big Joe, you're forgetting one thing. I was out for Christmas and I was drinking in my house on my own, in Trasna way, on my own, in my own house, minding my own business. When you walked into the house, you sat down and drove about 20 minutes. We had a bit of a chat. You grabbed my holy rosary beads, what my Auntie Mary gave me. Them rosary beads there, you grabbed them with your hand. And you're going to pull them off my neck. I looked at you. I said, Big Joe said, whatever you do, don't pull the rosary beads off my neck. Next you try to hit me a thump into the face. I said, Big Joe, I says, Big Joe said, I says, whatever you do, I said, don't try and hit me again, I said. I says, my cancer said, might be gone, I said. I said, I still could have cancer. I says, whatever you do, I says, don't hit me. But yet you had a cheek to draw the hand out and try and hit me, which roll in the in, 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 informed hand, right? When I got you and I struck you 
with a mighty right. And I hurt your jaw here in the port of the chin, in the port of the jaw. And I knocked you out for stones of I'm dead inside the house. When I had you knocked out, you fell and banged your head against the, the, the wall of my house inside the, inside the sitting room. And there was all blood in the wall from the back of your head. Your daughter Sabrina and your daughter Elizabeth walked in ten minutes later. I was sitting down drinking me beer as if nothing happened, looking at you knocked out on the ground because it was too good for you. Many a drunken person you bet. And that's all you bet all your life was drunken people. And you have all your own people turned against you. Everyone is turned against you. Nobody likes you. Everyone is turned against you. Now you have to grab my wife by the head of the hair. That's going to be a sorry mistake and a sorry move. And you talk about her calling a cancer. She would no respect for me when you, when you try to hit a cancer patient. But a cancer patient knocked you out. With that hand. That hand there, Big Joe, knocked you out. It's simple as that. So I have nothing else to say to you, Big Joe. Nothing else. You're not worth getting back that. You're not worth talking that. To be honest with you, I despise you. I always did. To be honest with you. And I always will. So, from future on, when, there, when, there's, when there's something happening, when we're having parties or having dues, we don't want you around them. You are not welcome around our house no more for anything. You are damn glad of Christie's backup and Christie's help. And you are damn glad of Elizabeth robbing you all the steak and all the sausages and all the raspberries. You ate no steak soft mouth now and you ate no sausages and you ate no raspberries. Whatever you ate, you pay for it. Elizabeth is getting you nothing else. And she got you nothing in the last couple of months. Is that why you're out with her now? That's why you're really out with her. Because she's robbing you nothing. You rang, you, you rang her up there a few months ago on the phone. I was sitting beside her in the car. When you rang her up, you got Alice to ring her. To, to, to look for a, a, horse, a horse trimmers. To shave your horses. You're getting no horse trimmers. Elizabeth is getting you nothing else. We want nothing else got to do with you. So you met Dr. Elizabeth. Now you go ahead now and make the video. Call me names. Call me old dirty names. And you see the names I'll get back with you as well. So if I were you now, I'd leave it there. We want nothing else to do with you. And that's it. And that's as far as it goes. And I knocked you out in my house. 85 tries in the way. I knocked you out. Your two daughters come in and asked you what happened to him. I said he slipped, I said, and he's after banging his head off the side of the wall. But you didn't. I knocked you out because you tried to hit me and you tried to pull the rosary, the, the holy rosary beads off my neck. What my Auntie Mary gave me from heaven. That's exactly what you did to me. You were always a bad man, Joe, and a bad minded man. But good luck to you now. Right, Maggie's Joe, this is a message for you. This is your boss. You're looking at your boss right here. I took 12 of ye, Maggie's Joe, do that to me. 12 of ye. Don't forget that. The bait I gave you, I did it on my own. I knocked your teeth back your neck on my own. I bet Sonny's brains in on my own, right? Ye one more bastards in Blackberry Lane are useless. Now, you Sonny, I swear on my father's grave and I swear to my two baby girls, you raped a donkey out in the field because I personally came behind you and caught you. I was walking out in the field to see Big Joe's horses. I swear to the holy rosary beads. 
when I looked in beside the ditch like that, and there you were, with one hand, with your tail up, and you're giving it to me. Yes, yeah. When I looked at you in shock, when I ran, and you ran after me, please, Gramsci, don't tell, please don't tell. Sonny, I swear in my dead father that I may bury one of my children. I'm not telling the word of a lie. Maggie's Bernie, you, you raped a little boy down in Jim's field in that lawn, Bernie. You were too young to get brought to court, Bernie. So you were. You raped a little boy. Now, there you go, ye dirty mudwards bastards. Ye mudwards. And you, Maggie's Joe, you just took your child's face to the electric cleaner. Because she was a little girl. Because you're not able to produce the sons. You're not able to produce the sons. You have Winnie killed. For every time she goes in to have a baby. You have her killed. Right? And every time she has the baby you're killing her when she has girls. When the girls comes out a few months older than you're baiting the girls. You're sticking the heaters to them. God knows what you're doing to them Joe. When you're doing that kind of thing now Joe. You're sick people like your father Joe. Right this is me Christy here. This is going to you, Joe. You're putting up pictures of my father when I took a crowd you to do. You're not putting up the pictures when I did to your brother. Now I'm going to get them to stick them up what me and daddy did when I left Hunter Hoods and my grandfather knocked Pa Ward's eye with a slap, left him a one eye. Do you remember old Pa Ward with the one eye? Remember Pa Ward with the one eye? Remember every time all we'd all be carrying on down the lane? Oh, big Joe would have nobody only me and his old few young ones. Remember when we'd bring you out to the field with Bates in the field? And Pa Ward would get the guards and take out his eye and make it out Big Joe did it. Big Joe did do it. In the handball alley. He slapped you all his life. He beat me muns all his life. Ye muns are dirt. You're dirt. Maggie's Joe. You're a dirt bird. You're beating your children because they're little girls. You're killing your woman because you're not able to beat a man. <laughs> He dirty yeah, paedophile! Yeah, yeah. Putting up pictures of what you did to daddy four or five years ago with a loady, you know. Here's daddy's face, look. He's your boss, boys. Always his bitchy. When I, when I go out the road, when I go out the road to you, Sonny Ward, you're going to remember me. As I'm putting them up, this is the way they did it the last time, Sonny. I'm banging you out with Sonny. I swear to my two girls, I'm doing the same again. I'm going to be ready for you in 15 weeks time, the 16th of March. Sonny, when I get you, ride the donkey. I'm gonna kill you. And that can be proved out. I'm killing you. Daddy can prove that. You're that sick. You're that look, sick of people who are raping children. I get down on my knees. I get down, I get down, I get down on my knee. Look at I put my hand up to God. That God may take my children away from me for Christmas. I'm a pen the word of a lie. Maggie's Bernie, you raped the little boy in Jim's field. Uh, Sonny Ward, I swear in me to six children. I caught you red-handed, stuck to the butt in an ass. <laughs> Pa Ward, you're nothing but a little child molester. My sister talked about you through the years. She's coming back for the press charges again, you have Pa. It's not over. She finished her jail sentence. She's out now. She's coming back for you, Pa, to bring you to hell. Right, this is one more thing I have to say. If Pa Ward has a grandson, I bet he's grandson Bernie Towney in Art Long. If he's a grandson that'll come out to fight me tomorrow or next day, let him out. Cause you're getting big. And I swear my grandfather's grave, the first moon ward oh, I get, I'm, oh, oh. I'm doing big damage, I'm chopping you up. And if it's so much. Maggie Joe, Maggie Joe, be a man, son. Be a man. I'll tell you what I'll lose you, Joe. I'll fight Sonny first time the 16th. And I'll fight you the 17th, Joe. The day after, son. The day after I beat you. I'll beat you any day of the week, son. You dirty, frickly, one Ward's bastard! You dirty one eye! Freaky eye, Pa Ward! I get you that way! And I'm dancing your eye, Pa! I'm gonna dance in your eye! I'm getting something true in Tucky! I swear my children's lives! Maggie's David, remember when I got you coming out of college? When you were walking in front of me and you are smiling! Yet I wouldn't do nothing to you! When I let you walk so far, when I dropped that hand in through your face! And when I did that thing, I ran up the accommodation. Bet you dead. And my new fella came in then and stabbed the head of you with a screwdriver. You remember that? We never let you go at nothing. I was... I'm beating you all my life. I was going like this. 
Boys, you've not let us stay in the video. We see ye soon and what you think, Maggie's Joe. And you're going to be left to ride off. I do no talk because you're the guardsmen. But I want to see you, Joe, sooner than you think. You, your father, your any of your nephews, whichever I get, I say nothing sooner than what you think, though, lads. I chose my town. I ain't coming back to that town. But I'll be back when you know, when you're not expecting me to be back. And dear boy, and I'll be back for a year's boss. He's your boss. One hour. We've no, not meant to say we're your boss. One hour for a visit. One hour. One hour. Astrogy. One hour. And and Maggie Ward, the old cursor, the antichrist that was taken down the pictures, cursing all her life. Look where the curses got you, Maggie. Where did the curses get you, salty tears? Salty tears. tears. Where did they get? I'll get you a power war when you're walking down your little lover's lane no, around the block. No, no. no, you're walking around when you're holding hands. Maggie, you do our fellow to pig's eye power war. Right, this is a message coming out to Marcus Martin, back to that. You all know who this is, Marcus Martin. This is me, Gramsci Joyce. Right, Martin, I just want to make this short and sweet. Me and you, my son was getting married to your daughter. Right? And uh, to be honest with you, when you were in the picture, my my son couldn't go walking or anything like that and have a chat with your daughter and they get to know one another for their marriage. Right? But Jet Martin, when you were in England and you weren't in the picture, a woman dropped my Lizzie and Davy out of Bridget for to give her twenty pound where you ran away to England and never left for her a pound or a loaf of bread or a cart in the milk inside in the house, right? You had to get a 20 pound brought out to your woman, right? To keep her going and be a grub or whatever the woman had to buy over. That was her own business, right? That's the kind of man now Martin you were, right? She was also drinking here another night with me, wife, Lizzie. I mean, you was drinking down in my house. When you says, come on, Gramsci, we'll go up to your house. I said, come on, so Martin. But little I knew, all you wanted to do was to come up and watch your daughter Mary and watch your wife Bridget. Right? So that's that there, Martin. The reason why you come up to my house and drink up Mary and Bridget and to drink up Lizzie because you see Davy walking around the park with Mary and you got ripping over it. But Bridget's a different kind of woman altogether than you, Martin. Bridget was a nice old woman, right? Bridget let Davy and, Ma and Mary walk to the shop by themselves when you were in England. And when you were not in the, way, in, in the picture, they were all doing them things. But when you're in the picture, they're not. It's Mexican fart shit. So this is, how, this, is where it all, this is where it all kicked off, Martin. It all kicked off because a country man gave you a couple of bitch slaps like you hit a child and bitch slapped you down to my house. You asked him out the back to fight you. He tore his top off. He was going out the back to fight you. You sat back down like a little bitch you are and you wouldn't go out the back and you wouldn't hit the countryman back. Now what kind of a right traveller I let a countryman hit him into the face? That's what you did. You also come up here another night, Martin, and you howled Bridget, and you know this is no word of a lie. I swear to my two daughters, Aunt Nine saying and this is the truth. You told Bridget, you left the last time for three months and you couldn't find couldn't find you. You're on some old gore pipe, some gutter hole, smoking a crack. And you told Bridget the next time you leave, it won't be for three months. It'll be for six months. Well, Martin, God bless the mark, you should be trying to get your own life sorted out. I started talking about running away and smoke more crack. God knows, Martin, you should be trying to get off that stuff. So that's what's all down to now, Martin. That the wedding is off, a staying off, and it's all down to because you couldn't hit a countryman back and a countryman bitch slapped you. So now, Martin, you're all about England that you want to go back to England and the whole lot. Well, if I use Bridget, I'd let you go to England. And I'd let you smoke every bit of crack that's around London, wherever you're living over there. Because you're nothing but a crack smackhead, right? Bridget would be a bigger fool giving up her house with all her children in it for the likes of you and go back and live in a little flat in London. 
a new little crack pipe in her hand, like a little black skin fart of a cow pipe. So, Martin, we wish you all the best with your daughter. But if you keep acting like you ways you're acting, Martin, that every time you, a boy goes to marry your daughter and you keep treating your daughter like that, you're going to have no son in law. Because you're going, someone's going to end up in the way, Mary. That's what's going to happen. And one more thing, Martin, I just want to get back to you. And you can ask your daughter, and ask your daughter to take down any holy picture in her house and get down on her knees and swear that she didn't do it. Because she did do it, and Bridget knows she did it. But Bridget was looking at I was looking at and Lizzie was looking at When you went outside, your daughter Mary, that was getting married to Davy, got her two fingers and stuck her two fingers into your pint and stirred them all around. She made dog shit to you and she said, I hate daddy. That's why I'm doing it to him. Now, Martin, I swear to my father's grave and in my two girls' lives, she did that. I saw ya. So now, so now, Martin, the best thing for me, for, for, for you to do now, the next time Mary gets a man, keep her nose over it and let the young one do what she has to do because for the own picture, Mary is going to get no man. We have no problems with Bridget or any, or any of Bridget's children, Mary or any of them. But Martin, while you're in the picture, Mary is not getting a man unless it's a crackhead like herself. And she'll never, one thing I can tell you, when she does get a man, she'll never get one as good as my baby. A man that doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, or doesn't act the bollocks. A very good man. So, Martin, good luck to you, you little. We were supposed to have the engagement. We were supposed to have the engagement yesterday, Martin. You kept putting the engagement back because you hadn't got the price of an old ring or an old watch or whatever. So, um, dear fair Martin, I wish your daughter the best in the future. She will not get a man as good as my baby, right? Um, it's simple as that. But Martin, when you're seen, you see what's going to happen to you with the countryman and what a few of the countryman's mates. You get to go now and stand by the Corkins because you are as good as God. Good luck. Well, Martin McDonald, uh, this is me, Gramsie here. Basically, Martin, I'm not giving out here or anything like that. But you're um, bringing my name into things that's not got to do with me. You're fighting young Joe, not me. So just wait for your baiting to come to you. And uh, I'm back in Joyce all the way. So as simple as that. So just keep my name over it. I would throw a big fight already, fighting cancer. Um, you can get back to me later on if you want. Call names about that if you want as well. When you're so low, call it children's names. That's Ellen and Joe's little child. Haley, God bless him. So, uh, from future on, just keep my name out of it. You're a big man. You're going out to a big man. You have a fight in your hands. As far as I can be concerned, young Joe's going to beat you. But that's my, that's, that's only my opinion. So, you have your opinion. So, just keep your own fighting to yourselves. And keep my name out of it. I have enough of battling my own problems. Well, Michael, here I am. This is going out to Michael Corkin. I'm here in your hometown, Michael. Walking in like a champ. Like the champ I am. This is your town, Michael. It's a bad way, Michael. When I have to leave this game. To come up to home and beg you out to fight. Are you coming out to fight me? The same day, your brothers is fighting my brother and my sons. Are you coming out like a man to fight? Yes or no? Let me know that now, Michael. This is over for you now, look. Am I bothered about you, Michael? Am I? Now, Michael, let's get back straight and clear. And let me know what you're doing. Are you fighting or are you not? That's the 
me go church up there, company. No waking for God's sake, from grow here, boys. Right, this is a message coming out to Marcus Martin, back to now. You all know who this is, Marcus Martin. This is me, Gramsci Joyce. Right, Martin, I just want to make this short and sweet. Me and you, my son was getting married to your daughter, right? And uh, to be honest with you, when you were in the picture, my my son couldn't go walking or anything like that and have a chat with your daughter and they get to know one another for their marriage, right? But Jet Martin, when you were in England and you weren't in the picture, a woman dropped my Lizzie and Davy out of Bridget for to give her 20 pound where you ran away to England and never left her a pound or a loaf of bread or a cart in the milk inside the house, right? You had to get 20 pound brought out to your woman, right? To keep her going and be the grub or whatever the woman had to buy over. That was her own business, right? That's the kind of man now Martin you were, right? She was also drinking here another night with me, wife, Lizzie. I mean, you was drinking down in my house. When you says, come on, Gramsci, we'll go up to your house. I says, come on, so Martin. But little I knew, all you wanted to do was to come up and watch your daughter, Mary, and watch your wife, Bridget, right? So that's that there, Martin. The reason why you come up to my house and drink up Mary and Bridget and they drink up Lizzie because you see Davy walking around the park with Mary and you got ripping over it. But Bridget is a different kind of woman altogether than you, Martin. Bridget was a nice old woman, right? Bridget let Davy and, and Mary walk to the shop by themselves when you were in England. And when you were not in the, way, in, in the picture, they were all doing things. But when you're in the picture, they're not. It's a Mexican fart yet. So this is, how, this, is where it all, this is where it all kicked off, Martin. It all kicked off because a country man gave you a couple of bitch slaps like you hit a child and bitch slapped you down to my house. You asked him out the back to fight you. He tore his top off. He was going out the back to fight you. You sat back down like a bitch you are, and you wouldn't go out the back, and you wouldn't hit the countryman back. Now what kind of a right traveller had let a countryman hit him into the face? That's what you did. You also come up here another night, Martin, and you told Bridget, and you know this is no word of a lie. I swear to my two daughters, Aunt Nine saying and this is the truth. You told Bridget, you left the last time three months and you couldn't find couldn't find you. You're on some old gore pipe, some gore hole, smoking the crack. And you tell Bridget, the next time you leave, it won't be for three months. It'll be for six months. Well, Martin, God bless the mark, you should be trying to get your own life sorted out instead of talking about running away and smoking more crack. God knows, Martin, you should be trying to get off that stuff. So that's what's all down to now, Martin. That the wedding is off, a staying off, and it's all down to because you couldn't hit a countryman back and a countryman bit slapped you. So now, Martin, they're all about England that you want to go back to England and the whole lot. Well, if I was Bridget, I'd let you go to England and I'd let you smoke every bit of crack that's around London, wherever you're living over there, because you're not but a crack smackhead, right? Bridget would be a bigger fool giving up her house with all her children in it for the likes of you and go back and live in a little flat in London and you a little crack pipe in her hand like a little black skin fart of a cowboy. So, Martin, we wish you all the best with your daughter. But if you keep acting like you as you're acting, Martin, that every time a boy goes to marry your daughter and you keep treating your daughter like that, you're going to have no son in law. Because you're going, someone's going to end up in the way, Mary. That's what's going to happen. And one more thing, Martin, I just want to get back to you. And you can ask your daughter, and ask your daughter to take down any holy picture in her house and get down on her knees and swear that she didn't do it. Because she did do it, and Bridget knows she did it. Because Bridget was looking at, I was looking at, and Lizzie was looking at. When you went outside, 
your daughter Mary that was getting married to Davy, got her two fingers and stuck her two fingers into your pint and stirred them all around. She made dog shit to you and she said, I hate daddy. That's why I'm doing it to him. Now, Martin, I swear to my father's grave and my two girls' lives, she did that. I saw ya. So now, so now, Martin, the best thing for me, for, for, for you to do now, the next time Mary gets a man, keep her nose over it and let the young one do what she has to do because for the own picture, Mary is going to get no man. We have no problems with Bridget or any, or any uh, Bridget's children, Mary or any of them. But Martin, while you're in the picture, Mary is not getting a man unless it's a crackhead like herself. And she'll never, one thing I can tell you, when she does get a man, she'll never get one as good as my lady. A man that doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, or doesn't knock the bollocks. A very good man. So, Martin, good luck to you, you little. We were supposed to have the engagement. We were supposed to have the engagement yesterday, Martin. You kept putting the engagement back because you hadn't got the price of an old ring or an old watch or whatever. So, um, dear friend, Martin, I wish your daughter the best in the future. She will not get a man as good as my baby, right? Um, it's simple as that. But Martin, when you're seen, you see what's going to happen to you with the countryman and what a few of the countryman's mates. You get to go now and stand by the Corkins because you are as good as God. Good luck. Well, hello, hello. What the, yep, 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 you boy, yeah. How are you all keeping out there in this little small world? It's a very small world. The fights are getting close. Joyce versus O'Dolan. Who do you favour? Number one for Joyce. Because Joyce is number one. Or number two for O'Dolan. Because O'Dolan is second best. Joyce is first best. That's the way it is. I want to wish me, I want to wish me brother-in-law Davy, and I want to wish me brother-in-law Joe, and I want to wish me cousin Alan, and I want to wish me cousin Joe, John's Joe, the best of luck on their fights. I hope to God and a blessed mother, and I ask my poor father in heaven, that you may take lumps out of your dolences, that you may give your dolences the only baiting that they ever got before. And their hundred thousand, their big trophy is what they call it, took off them and sent back to England with their tail between their legs. You're definitely going to have need to hate the Jaisas then. You have need to hate the Jaisas. You hate the Jaisas since, since, since our big Joe bet you there years ago in Dublin. you never go over to obey Anthony. Well, Anthony, you tell your son to keep my name out of his mouth from here on. And don't mention my name no more. If it doesn't want to be called for loading names. Because I don't mind. I, 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 I'll call names to be at the band all day. And I'll take, I'll take it as well all day. So from, from here on, Marbleize, Gremlin, a little, grim, a, a little Gremlin with a big head that size and two little Gremlin eyes. The fellow that's fighting young Joe, keep your name, keep keep my name out of your mouth. Now I didn't even start drinking yet, to be honest with you. I drink one pint of Guinness once a week to keep the blood pressure up on going and getting the fine and steady. So this is for um, young Joe and it's for Joe's Davy and it's for at Bernie's Allen and it's for John's Joe. Four victories we're going to have on today. We have a big pub hired out and all. We are the men. The Jaisis is unbeatable. You're not getting the word bit out of them. I was there to first fight. I was there to first fight when O'Dolan hot Joe the headbutt. 
he should be disqualified here and then, but Young Joe wouldn't allow it. Young Joe wanted to continue the fight because he knew he was the baitings of O'Donnell. And now he's even 100% more confident that he's even baiting him worse than he already bet him the first time. I'll drink an old drop of this for you, Young Joe, because I know you are going to give it to him. And from here on in, boy, Keep my name out of your fucking mouth. Oh, darling. <sighs> Keep my name out of your mouth. Because you're going out, and you're going out to hardy men. They're going to be good fights. They're going to be very good fights. But I favour Jaisus because I am a Jais to the backbone. I'm Gramsy. I'm Gram. I'm Gramsy. I'm Gram. I'm I'm, da I'm Gramsy Jais. I'm David Jais's son. So therefore, I'm with Jais all the way. Simple as that. The boys will do it, and I know they'll do it. Good luck now. Yeah, or Dolans as bastards. When you can get on mentioning my, my grandfather and talking about cancer and talking about my dead grandfather, the next time you mention anyone dead belong to me, let it be my brother in law, or let it be my grandfather, or let it be anybody, the next time you mention any any dead belong to me, I will drag the dead out of the grave belong to you the next time you mention any dead belong to us. As simple as that. You're not getting everything your own way. As simple as that. Play dirty, we'll play dirty as well. Call dirty names, we'll call dirty names. Far as I can serve now, wait for your baiting. And it's, it's coming to you. And your money is getting took off you. Alright mate, it's me Gramsie. Alright, come here, what's the story? Black yellow, purple, blue, give it up for Gramsie Joyce's crew. Listen, it's like this now, uh, Trevor. To be honest with you, I'm gone highly sick of you. Right? I did wish you a happy Christmas, and I wished your family a happy Christmas. And what I did say in the past, about calling names, I did, I did make it up, and I did tell lies, right? I did do that. Right? But in all fairness, I am sick of you. You're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, and you're on fucking what you call it live, right? You think you're a fucking celebrity. <laughs> you, you, you think you're Paddy Doherty, you do. Right? You're far from Paddy Doherty's league or any of the boys over in England that is celebrities, right? And Tyson Fury, proper top men. Shame on you, sinning for a man like Tyson Fury. A man that, that, that fought for thousands upon thousands inside in the ring. The man often fought for hundreds of thousands. Right? The man came a million, bulky billion year out fighting. And is a and is a gypsy king. Tyson Fury is a gypsy king. And the chick you to come on YouTube looking for the fight Tyson Fury and look for the fight any more man like Tyson Fury. Trevor, give over making your videos. This is come from me now with a small king, right? Give over making your videos. Stop making a laugh for yourself, right? All you're doing is making a hole of the mind show yourself. I did it I did it myself long enough and I'm trying to come to terms with it that I did do wrong and I did make tapes and I did make a fool of myself. Now I'm telling you, you're making a clown out of yourself. You are a clown and you're proving that you are a clown. Give over acting the clown business and go out and fight Kiwi Doherty and go out and fight them Joe <laughs> and go out and fight the fellas that so we're fight off you and stop carrying your land. And I see that old big heavy hefter that's sitting in the back with you. The big heavy fella, the big man all together that's sitting in the back. God help him. I can see right through him. He's not as bad that he's supposed to be. He's a harmless looking lad. He's not a dangerous looking man at all. He's a harmless looking man. Trevor, please, stop hanging on with mongs. Stop making a clown of yourself. Them boys is going to turn again you, some, some day or later. Sooner than later, they are going to turn again you. You are going to get a bad bait in Scotland. And you're going to have nowhere to run to at all. Please, 
I, Maximia, give over the black garden. Like a good man, happy Christmas to you. <laughs> right? Just give over your black garden, man. Right, this is the message going out to William Martin, the fellow with the, two, with, with the two crooked bandy eyes. One going for north and the other one going for south. Owl, owl, owl eyelashes. You got on there and you're putting old mock wigs on your head, um, trying to make a laugh at people out in markets. The only pity is that I didn't come behind you at the same time with a machete and leave the machete stuck in, the, stuck in your head. That's the only pity. You sh should be the last person to make a laugh at anybody. You were just living, where are you living, Christy? Up the cliff. You're living in Loch the Cliff. So with you are. Gremlin. With a little gremlin. You're living in Loch, Loch in the Cliff with a little gremlin. You and the gremlin will be done in very fast. We sent, very fast. We sent, one, we sent one of our women down to the south already. With pepper spray and machetes. We don't have to be a G. What did your woman do to the fella? What did your woman do? Lying at the eyes of him inside a chipper, I swear my grandfather's grave, and ran him through and he begged for mercy. The women we get to be a G, we don't. Imagine the fright you get we can behind you. Keep it no, up, and this you, same, keep it up, and you will see all and this. And this same fella can't walk hardly. God bless the mark, there's something wrong with his legs. Not making a laugh for nobody, because there's a God in heaven. But God bless the mark, for a fella that, that can't hardly walk, you definitely could run. You saying both? You could definitely run. And when you're got, William Martin, I swear to my father's grave, when you're got, you are getting sliced and diced. You're not over it. And by the next 12 months, by next Christmas, you could be needing a wig yourself. She's no hair to do as with As simple this. as that. She has no hair. And a good pair, a good pair of eyelashes. Which are two crooked eyes in you. We'll get you. We'll get you out in the market or we'll get you out in your house. You are getting got in the next two, in the next two or three months. You will be got. When it's all forgotten about, you think. When you're sleeping and not thinking of anything. That's when we'll get you. We'll get you when, you, when, 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 when you're not expect, expecting it. As simple as that. I'm not dying. My cancer is gone. The hair will grow back. And he had hair. Hair will grow back, but skin won't. And my hair will grow back. So you can be sure of that. And if it never grew back, he doesn't give a shite. And here, look at I'm Gramsci Joyce, and I don't give a fuck for anybody. Are for nobody. As simple as that. You see that big bald, bald head? That bald head will grow the hair back. That'll have the hair back in, an, in another couple of weeks with the help of God and the rest of the mother. But to see you, when I get wraps machetes down on top of your head, there'll be no hair growing back there. You'll be got out around Cabin Market. And I, and I won't even have to go to Cabin Market to do it. I'll send me woman out there to you. And I'll get her to slice you and dice you. That's what I'll do. And she'll do it as well. You dirty, crooked eyes, mutton bastard, yeah. There's only one right breed of a mutton belong to you, and that's old Joe in Dublin. The rest of you are only a pack of shits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you dirty whore! <laughs>
belonged to Joe, one of your few, <coughs> a few of his nephews and his sons that was only young at the time. Now when we begin the Oreo drinker, me and you better off getting this fight off uh, settled for once and for all. Will you come out here and fight me all together? Because Big Joe is sick of baiting you. Big Joe has your brain damage. You're gone like a handicapped man. You're a vegetable now at the moment, Andy. Right? And I asked for your son, your son Willie there to fight there as well a few weeks ago on YouTube. And he didn't even reply back to me. Barney is afraid to put his face on YouTube and on the camera since the last baiting and the show we got met up in Galway. Barney was met a show. Right? With Paddy Ward. Oh, Barney, look, uh, stop back in the shit. You and your father have put up the heart attack face. And come out and fight the boys who ask you to fight. You understand that? You want to get all the fights you want this time. Oh, Barney, go back to the coward and Simon will get the king as well. How can you be all the king's boys? Boys, listen, the boys here are more than uh, his kings, where I'm living. Davy and Joe's kings, and John as well. Just are three legends, like their father. They went out to big hardy boys and won uh, the Drew and, and won whatever, but there are hardy fights and good fights. Baron McGinley, the last fight that you had, man, your left friend, Alex, like your father. The way as Dan Rooney left your father years ago, out in, in, in that place up in the north, where Dan Rooney went to face you. Baron McGinley, just let me make sure of yourself, will you? God bless the mark, talk with Big Joe Adam Crowds. Big Joe had no crowd button. Get these boys that don't show up for your play and his nephews from, from Lavin. And you had all the Quinn McDonald's there with you. Not saying nothing about anybody, but that's who you had with you. You had a queer army yourself. And that's the same time your son Trevor hid in the car. I'm going to show myself when David gave him one box, Joe's David. Trevor hid in the car. Listen, boys, you're not kings, and there's no one fair to me. You might kill one of us or poke one of us, but you'll get it back. Trust me, I can guarantee you. Aidan McGinley with those heart attack face, handicapped man with two inability legs. Will you stop the carrying on and show yourself on YouTube? Because you should be ashamed to put your face on it. Because you're good for nothing, you won't go to Big Joe. Big Joe hasn't got one arm, no. Big Joe never had one arm. If you have one arm, he still beats you. You're useless. And Amy, if you keep it up, me and you're going to have to go and fight. You hear me, Amy McGinty? And here, look at the man again, I saw a night. Alright? And I'll still fucking have, I'll still handle this one. You know why I'll handle this kind of Guinness? Because I'm a Joyce. Do you understand that? And Amy McGinty's early shits. Amy McGinty's crowd over in England. And Michael, yes, you are barred out of Dublin. You will never step foot back in it. And if you do, you'll want to be fast getting over. Because we have people up in Dublin, not saying who they are, the minute you're seen in Dublin, we're getting the message straight away. And as God help you, I can give you a happy old Christmas. Right? Simple as that. I'm going to let this pipe begin to settle. It takes a few seconds. But getting back to the McGinty's anyway in, Eng in England, you're sure Barney's afraid to get out of here. Paddy Ward has a left handicap. Dan Rooney has the end of that handicap. Big Joe, you did nothing to him. You cut his hand off. How hand did you cut off? 15, 20 stitches in the hand. He did nothing for fellas your ages. Big old ha handicap boys with machetes. I tell you one thing, if I had a machete in my hand, I, I, it would be more than 20 stitches I was given. I, as simple as that. We brought no weapons for us. We thought we went there, we went there for a short day to full of respect. And the cheeky, dirty bastards we trans to caught up an old man inside in the chapel. You know the look you'll have for that. You dirty old golden roads. You tramps. You're not going to pack the shits in my eyes. As simple as that. And here we go, anyway. Up the joints. Yeah. This is um, Simple Simon, the chicken, the Scottish chicken sound. Here, Simple Simon, look at that. I'm only five foot six, I'm only a small man. I'm looking on YouTube, and I'm, I'm looking on the internet, and the whole world, I'm six foot one, and I'm the king of this and the king of that. Look at I'm only five foot six, Simple Simon. And I don't raise you, I don't raise Barney, and the senior father, I, I hate him a little. He has a head and a head cow. Hello. Right, this has come back now to Bruce Lee's Martin over in England. It's come back to the Martins, right? I'm only looking at a few of their videos there now, slowly but surely. 
So we're going on there about old poor Nanny, God help her, old Nanny Martin. Oh, Nanny Martin was a, a lovely woman, a beautiful old woman. To me, she was like an old granny when I knew her. I have nothing bad to say about that woman, right? You're going on about old Nanny, how that people broke up her house and people did this. Us Joyce's broke up no house belonged to old Nanny. Old Kathleen Martin broke up Nanny Martin's house. Her own daughter broke up old Nanny Martin's house. And Kathleen Martin wasn't able to pay for the rent of old Nanny Martin's house. Right? Our big Paul, one of my own cousins, that's married to Kathleen Martin, big Paul Joyce, our, our Cookie Joyce's son, uh, one of my own cousins, a second cousin of my own, that's married to Kathleen Martin, he was the one that was acting like a son and act, acting like a daughter to old Nanny Martin. And the reason why I say he was acting like a daughter, because he was doing things for old Nanny that her own daughters couldn't do. Old Paul Joyce put everything into that old house. He was there for years. Uh, basically, old Paul Joyce is the one that was looking after old Nanny, cleaning old Nanny, looking after old Nanny. Kathleen Martin got up out of that house several times and left old Nanny in that house and left Paul in that house with a crowd of children while Kathleen Martin would be running for about two weeks or three weeks running from here to there. God knows where she is going. I don't know where she is going and I couldn't give a fuck at her. But I'm telling you now, don't be getting on the phone saying that we did this to old Nanny and we did this to old Nanny. We did nothing to old Nanny Martin. Old Nanny Martin was a nice old woman who used to mind her own old business. Did nothing to nobody in that town. And old Paul Joyce, one of my own people, was looking after old Nanny. Cleaning her, cleaning the house, making the dinners and making the grub. Kathleen Martin didn't, didn't even know how to make a dinner. Paul Joyce did it all. One of my own people. Now, good luck. Don't get on your phones with old nanny saying that we broke up houses. We broke up nothing. My son broke up nothing belonging to nanny Martin. My son had a bit of an, a bit of an argument with ye, and Kathleen Martin broke the windows in the top of old nanny herself and rang the, and rang the guards, the police, on my son. That's what happened. And ye fucking know that. Ye rats, bastards, ye policemen, you're the ones that got my son arrested for your little lies. Now, good luck, and look after old Nanny before she's even dead, and give her some kind of fucking grief in her old heart. Give her some kind of good, because you're doing nothing for old Nanny, and a lovely woman. Do something for the old woman. And don't have Paul Joyce cleaning her hole, and don't have Paul Joyce doing this for her, and doing that for her, and making dinners, and making that. Stop making a woman out my cousin, and go along and do it yourselves. Ye Vera, you Vera, you Vera, and the old pig down in Ballymatton, he go now and look after old Nanny Martin and stop having my cousin Paul Joyce out clearing old Nanny Martin's arse. If you're so bothered about Nanny, why are you having her son-in-laws clearing her hold for her? Well, your daughter should be able to do it. He fucking vermin. Stop now and leave the old woman over. This is me, Martin Jr. number one, the champ. I can hold my guns to that because I know, I know I'm a better man than you. The likes of you, you dirty old Yorkie, to get on they go on the YouTube and call me woman names uh, just because she ran you too long for yesterday like an old dog. You dirty cowardly bastard. Yeah. When my woman can run you, you can imagine the running I'm going to give you when I go out the road to fight you. And don't worry Martin George, the fight is going to come to you and I am baiting you on today and that's a promise. I'm not a bullshit talker, I'm a good little small man and I'm back. Gramsci Joyce is back and get that into your fucking heads. I am the fucking man. Don't ever forget that, you smelly, ugly, shite in the trousers prick. I am number fucking one. I am fucking number one and I'll fucking put them up like that and I'll bang them into your face. You know all about it, you scumbag. This can out to you, Maggie's Joe. Maggie's Joe, I'm not getting into an old YouTube warrior with the likes of you because I really know how good you are. You weren't worth that. Right? A minute and 45 seconds, son, I put you away with. Right? Bet you in a minute and 45 seconds. So please, Joe, don't be getting on videos no more trying to insult me or saying that whole oh, take up for me. I have a lot more people behind me than you could ever imagine, son. I have the four best sons in Ireland belong to me. And my sons has plenty of, plenty of first cousins down in Moat. Plenty of them. 
So there is plenty of us down there now. They're not children no more now, Maggie's Joe. Who do you have, Maggie's Joe? Timmy Anthony, 40 stone. Martin, 35 stone. You, 33 stone. <laughs> right? Now, and Maggie's Bernie with your long teeth as well. Him. You have them. That's your backup now. And old Willie Rock. That's your backup. A few shits and nephews. And your old few shits and nephews. Look at Joe. You're no good, son. You never were any good. The best old ye. Best, the best old ye at the moment is poor old Sonny. Sonny went out there and took an old wait for 24 minutes. Had an old draw fight. And that's the way as it is. I don't have a bad thing to say about Sonny. I'm glad the way as that fight went. But you, you dirty dog, you, you never got over the bait that you got out in the bog. I'm telling you now, you're going to under mentioning me, your brother and all Joe as well, saying that for, when, when you meet, you meet. Do you know what you, Joe, do to you? Do you know what you, Joe, do to you? A backhand slap and he gave your face lopsided. Lopsided. You dirty good brother on the moon to your Maggie's Joe. Stop getting on the videos, Maggie's Joe, trying to to make a man of yourself. Because we all know you have nobody down that lane. And the day you come up here trying to come around my house where I have a where I have a crowd of children, you're going with a serious thing going. Because the day I get down to the south, I'm expecting three or four years. And before I go up that three or four year, I'll have someone have a new well sussed out for me where I'll get you at the right time and the right place. And then I'd hand myself into the guards in the south. When I have you got me and my son Christy. And I swear, look at, I swear my two daughters' lives. And I, that, that I've buried my little baby Johnny, and he's my little pet. I'll watch and I'll wait for someone down, down in that clone or more to tell me exactly where you are, where you're going. And me and Christy and Elizabeth, we will get you. We will get you. We won't go to look for anybody. You, particular, you personally. So don't think that you'll do this and do that. We're the ones that runs that clone. And we're the ones that runs Mode. We're the Jaisis. Jaisis. Well, our young fellas now are not 10 and 11 no more, Joe. You dirty, handicapped, green-faced bastard, yeah. Right, Green Tea, this is me, Christy, here. See you on the video saying you're coming up for a pint and you and your scuttery arse brothers are doing this and doing that to daddy. At the end of the day, Joe, it's only me and my father living up here and listening to Ski. If you have a problem, if you're so tough and men, how many there is, come up and do what you want. Any country fella around the town will tell you where we are. And come, and you have an awful battle in your hands, Joe, when you do come. There'll be one of lion getting lifted in the morgue back down to Vart Lone. What you, you dirty moon What do you do, Joe? What do you do, Joe? Will you put an old knickers around your old face like you did years ago, Joe? Shitey knickers. When, 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 when you come out to Big Joe's house years ago, ten or eleven ye, when we when when you when you drop when you drove that fast, you crashed the car going around the corner. You went missing through the bog. We followed ye, and you're gone through the fields. And you the fighting men, Joe. You Maggie Joe that used to watch me leave me old house in Melbank, Joe. Watch me leave me house, Joe. Go up the old town, so you and your strictly old brothers could go down and break no windows out of the house. You would never come and do it when I was there, Joe. What makes you think you're going to come to the north, Joe, and, and do something and get going with it, Joe? Joe, I have young fellas now, Joe, they're not children no more. And my young fellas has good cousins down in our clone, and more, Joe. See, we're not aged to me anymore. You have no one, Joe. There's only you and a couple of your fat brothers, Joe, and a few of your own nephews. Now, Joe, don't even get back to me no more, Joe, because you're, 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 you're not a fighting man, Joe. You, you're not playing to be seen to be a fighting man. I'll put you up on YouTube later on. You're already on it. you got over 10 million views. With your teeth get put back your neck and bet in a minute and 45 seconds. Well, you're the fastest man in the world to say bet to a dice. You said bet to me. The monger, yeah. The monger of you. Now, me, I, I, I made you say bet, Joe. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't make Sonny say that, because the man would doubt and fight like an old legend. But you, you dirty mongrel. That's what you are, Maggie's Joe. I say, and, and Joe, you're a long time now coming for your cup of tea, you and your brothers. We'll have plenty of sweet cake here waiting for you as well.
That here is our milk cow and sour. Come for your tea whenever you want, son. And we'll call down to Dan's Tavern even before you come, Joe. We can call down to Dan's, Dan's Tavern and have a pint with you. Don't, d- don't think, Joe, that we, that we won't find out, Joe, that, 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 because we live it off for a month. If you came to my house now, I'd live it off for a month. I'll live it off for two weeks. You won't overreact me and get me excited and get me caught in the south. I'll live it off for a month, Joe. I'll have someone sussing you out. Where you are, I could be hiding in our clone for two days, you wouldn't even know it. And I swear to my father's grave, Joe, you, I will personally li- I'll leave you next to the grave. Joe, we'd give you that bad of a bait, Joe, we'd be talking the country. Me and my old father, we'd be like serial killers with the bait we give you, Joe. We'd leave you like Freddy Krueger with all the flesh hanging off you. Yeah, big fat woman bait, yeah, that's all you're any good for. Good look out, I'd not be replying to my father in the morning, boss. And Willie yeah, Mac, you piece of shit, yeah. Willie Mac, I wouldn't even mention your name, Willie Mac. The reason why I wouldn't even mention your name, Willie Mac, because you're worse than your own legend of a cousin, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we all cousin the religion you mentioned you said. Do you remember that you said on the tape? We all cousin the I mean old cousin the I mean, I mean old, what do you call him, Christy? A, a legend of the A legend? Look who's calling a legend! I bet me in a minute forty five seconds. Now Willie Wack, you're going around saying how you've my father's pride and all that crack. My father's not fighting. Now my father's not fighting anymore because he's beat me and he has not to prove to you anymore. But it nice sit for you three times, Willie Wack, and you kept refusing me. So therefore, I must have your pride in my pocket, you dirty waster, you go on the road, you. You dirty Maggie Joe's daughter, you. Now, Joe, get this show on the road. Get it going dirty if you want to go on dirty. And I promised my people down and more one thing. Right? I'm with them, 100%. Me and my young fellas. Don't think we're up here hiding. I'm telling you, we will get you when we will, when we want you. We will get you. It'll take us a month or it'll take us a week. We'll have someone sussing you out where you're going and where you're not going. And, I, and I'll be in a clone at the same time. And no one will know. And I spread my father's grave, Maggie, so I'll see you. You dirt you. I'll shite, I'll shite in your grave when you're dead. Look at your old brother Davy there, boys, a couple of years ago, and I was only a young fella. I prodded the head of him with a screwdriver. My father left his hole, left his face like a pony's hole. You remember that? And I've blessed a mark for a fat man. He must do 25 miles an hour like a square going horse out of college. You dirty rubbish. Now you, now you vermin, you vermin from Blackberry Lane that can't have a fair fight. Don't be getting on videos letting the people know that you're fighting up the choices, that you'll go out and you fight and you do it dirty. You're doing nothing. Trust me, you're doing nothing. If I had a bad look coming out of north, coming out of north, to go down on top of you, Maggie's Joe, I will go down, but I'll go down on my own terms, Joe. Let me take me a week or a month, Joe, to find out where you are, or what school you are in, Joe, or what time you open your children to school at, or picking them up. Joe, 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 you'll be a sorry boy. And boys, you're all about up the moon wards. He pack the mongrels. I want him to say to you now. Let all the moon the wards. fucking choices. And we let, are them. And let every moon ward go and drive their nose a mile up my arse. Because I am the fucking boss. I am him. Right, this goes out to Ned Myers' crowd, Mullingar, right? You're on Jordan's page, right? Me, me, me sister-in-law's page. Calling Big Joe names, saying go back to the beginnings. Look at more than your line there from beginning these names out of your mouth, and there's Big Joe's names out of your mouth. Because for one short thing, Neil Myers is a morning guard wouldn't be able for the beginnings, and he wouldn't be able for Big Joe's. Now, the reason why I'm making this tape because Big Joe's boys wouldn't make one about you, because Big Joe's boys is too big for you. Now, I'm only a small little man, so I'm telling you now, cop on to yourself, or you'll have me coming for you, and you hear me? And I don't give a fuck about any of the Myers is the morning guard. If you're calling Big Joe names, let Big Joe's name out your fucking mouth, because he's a legend, he's a fucking king. Keep his name out your mouth, you fucking pack of shits, oh smelly feet. So I'm telling you, give it over now, fucking Ed's my feet. I'm going fucking sick to watch our good at you, fucking midgets. What's the story? Oh, hello, what's the story there, then? We're all live here, we're up here in our old north here. Having a few old beers, having a bit of crack. What's the story? All eyes on me. Anybody looking here? We're here getting twisted drunk. Joe, give me a pint of Christy, how do I put that around here? 
What's the story, everybody? We're all out enjoying ourselves here. What's the story? <laughs> Black, yellow, purple, blue. Give it up for the Joyce's crew. That's Joe. It's Christy. Our man is getting twisted drunk, look. It's getting twisted. We're alcoholics, we are. Now I'm going for a big burger. I'm Burger King, I am. I'm twisted. I'm going to sing Spanchin Hill now in a minute as well. 22 eyes. So here for me, Daddy. Anybody like a burger? Do you want a burger, Gramsie? I've no money, but you want one. Pity on me. Ah, man. After a few pints, would you look at this? Fucking up the fight already. Go on, Ethan. What's it? Oh, did that say, Christy? What are you oh, texting? Very curry chips, Grammys, the daughter. Two curry chips and two double cheeseburgers. Just for yourself? Just for myself, man. Just for me, all for me. Number fucking one. I'm twisted drunk here, I am. I'm Maui. Love it. I fucking love the beer. I'm twisted. The small king is drunk. I'm the best man up here in the north. We're all live here, we're all live. This is this is where I get my food, it's the best little rest. You see the ball hold on. Video is getting on. Lads, I'm getting twisted here, boys. Boss. Huh? Boss. 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 Where are we anyway, lads? Where are we? What? We're having a good time. We're having an amazing time, lads. You know what? We don't care who knows where we are. Go and look up there. Okay. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. What have we got here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Nice, nice, boys. Is this Johnny, don't talk, my son. Two minutes. Hello, any viewers there? I have an awful load to get off my chest here this evening. Seven viewers. Nineteen viewers. That's fast. Anyone I know watching. Any more? I suppose a good few viewers that I'm expecting to watch it mightn't be able to watch it because they're enjoying, they're enjoying their sense at a wedding, so they are. They're enjoying their sense at the wedding, so they're probably not watching it, but I hope one or two of them is watching it. This is on an uh, open page, this video. Rambo Livy or whoever else feels like sharing it is welcome to share it, so they are. Anyone that wants to share this video is welcome to share this video. So they are. I have a few things. I have a few things to get off my chest. Right. Let's take this phone and charge first. And um, basically, I wasn't going to my sister's wedding today. Um, but I decided to go for the sake of my sister and her son Brian because my sister treats me with the height of respect, Sabrina, and she treats my children with the height of respect, and I treat Brian like my own son, to be honest with you. So I went for Brian's sake and for Sabrina's sake. That's what I went to the wedding for. But basically, 
got dressed up, brought my little black Johnny with me to the wedding. And Pauline and her baby and Christy, it's in Athlone in the Shamrock Lodge Hotel. That's where the wedding is. So we went down to the wedding anyway. So Sabrina went and she got us our dinners. But we were sitting down anyway and the dinners was only handed to her hands. We never ate the dinners anyway. When my father turned around and said, oh, is that you, Lizzie, he says. So he sat down beside me and Josie's Lena was sitting at the table and Christopher's Bridget and Spike Navin's sister married to Timmy Joyce. She was at the table. But my father says that I'm going around calling not but names lately on Facebook. So I am. Going around, it must be about Biddy Keenan. Well, that's who he was on about. He was on about Biddy Keenan anyway, then calling her names. Well, am I all the right to call Biddy Keenan names when Helena is up in the Facebook calling my man names? But Daddy, it's going to be a bigger shame on you when Biddy Keenan dies and you go to her funeral. And your daughter up calling her names and hopes that she's dead again the three months is out. So it's going to be bigger shame than you when you go to the funeral through me. Now, you said to me also when I was at that table and Spike Navin's sister, Lord of Mercy and Spike, was sitting at that table. You say that I call Spike Navin names. Now let me put one thing straight to you. Spike Navin is my Davy's godfather. I call no Spike Navin names at any time. Okay? I called Jerry Ward names. I called Christy Michael with the Rotten Bones names. I called Canstery Biddy and Innes names. Okay? At no stage did I call Spike Navin any names. Have no reason to call that man names. And I called Jerry Ward names. And I called Ned Ward names. Right? My man and my children is good as the next. When my children or my man is getting called names, surely to God, Lizzie Joyce is going to call plenty of names back. Well, now anyway, when you sat at the table and you were giving out to me, I won't say I shook my mouth either, because I can't say that I keep my mouth shut for anyone. But basically, you caught me by the neck and I told you, go ahead, I said, I wouldn't even pull your hand off me. I said, go ahead and hit me, I said, because I'm going to get someone for you and give them a beating. Right? You took your hands off me. You caught my son Johnny and my son Johnny shut his eyes at you. Shut his eyes at you. Daddy, my children has no feelings for you. Once nothing got to do with you, you came to the north at Christmas. You got dear daddy who had cancer and you tried to beat dear daddy into the face at Christmas time. And on many occasion that you thought to get Gramsie and beat the shit of him. But what kills you and the likes of you is that Lizzie and Gramsie doesn't lie down for no one. Another stage we're in Tor Valley, living in Tor Valley. When a little yellow car came, there was a, they were all drinking in the pub. But there was lies brought up to the pub. My Christy would have been about, Alison was two. She's nine now. Christy would have been about 13 years of age at the time. But thank God I had Christy and Davy well trained. I had Davy trained, whatever car comes down carrying on, you go out, son, and bust the wheels. I'd have Christy with a... A good lump of a weapon in his hand. But basically, three men came to my house. My own people came, taught a big Ramsey like a dog in his house, put the window flying, and nearly took my two year old Alison's eye out her head. Ye know, we fought like warriors. We fought like warriors. There was blood skited in all angles that day. Yes. Gramsie, there's blood sky out, Gramsie, with three of ye. But Gramsie, his woman, and his son Christy, and his little son David, that was only about seven at the time, put blood sky now through ye. 
Do you remember that time? Your bullying days is over. My children, when Davy and Joe come home from this wedding tomorrow with the help of God, you will not see the daylight of my children again. You have your favourite grandchildren. My children is not your, not grandchildren to ya. Your son John, Lord and mercy in him. His children are treated like shit with you also, to be honest with you. Shit with you. So they are. The same way I'm treated shit and my children is treated shit. But when I was robbing you boot loads of stuff and for the family when you'd ring me up to rob you hoovers and rob you steam washers and get you this and get you that I'll go down and paint a wall for you. I was wanted, wasn't I? But when Gramsie got sick and Lizzie couldn't go down to you much or couldn't get you much, Lizzie wasn't wanted. But Lizzie then left the wedding because Lizzie couldn't sit in the wedding and keep her little mouth shut. But the only mistake I did while I was waiting for my lift, there was one or two people out in the hall that I should have took my high heel shoe off and put them in through the main doors of the Shamrock Lodge with their blood dripping out through their foreheads. Okay? Now, Daddy, Helena Keenan is on a thing calling my man names. That Biddy Keenan may be dead again the three months is out. Okay, that Biddy Keenan may be dead again the three months is out. And yes, Daddy, I didn't call I didn't call Spike Naven names. I called Jerry Jerry Ward the hangman names. That's who I called names to. The hangman. Okay. You have no respect for my children or my children's man. It's hard for us to have respect for you. The days of our respect is finished. My Davy and Joe is at that wedding this evening. And my Davy and Joe will not want to look the side that you're on because I have them told. My poor Joe cried. I had no room for him to come home in a car. Cried to get into a car with me. Because that, that's such a grandfather that you are now. You're the good grandfather. You are the best grandfather in the world, okay? You that came to the north trying to be a cancer patient when a cancer patient left you kicking on the ground. Do you remember that time? Right? So next time you feel like catching me by the neck, the closest person to you, I should have been fast enough today to get the closest person to you and catch them by the neck and pepper spray them and bait the face of them for you. So now, Greyface, don't you dare ever disrespect me again. And when Biddy Keenan dies, go to her funeral and hold her head down low with the names that Lizzie Joyce is calling the cancery prostitute, that she may be dead, the Keenan's whore, that she may be dead again the month is out. Do you expect me to keep my mouth shut for Biddy Keenan and the likes of you Coming to the north, when Joe's having parties and in a skilling, you don't blow your nose in around Joe's house. You come to my house, but I had to bar you out my house from pissing around it and bringing infection and disease up to my man that's up, for dying, up fighting cancer in a hospital. Now I want nothing got to do with you for the future on. Keep away from me. My children wants nothing to do with you. You are no grandfather to them. Okay? No grandfather to them, we kill her. We kill her. All the breed of you are suiciders. We killers and hangman. I want nothing got to do with you from now on. So when you feel like coming to the north to the cancer patient, come to the north and the cancer patient will do what you did to you the last time. Knock you clean out and put the snot and blood out through your mouth and nose. Now good luck and kiss my ass and my children's ass. You're nothing to us, only dirt.